What is up everybody, it's channel name and we are back with another one. Meta just dropped some new updates for the Quest lineup, and we're diving deep into the top 5 features you absolutely need to know. These updates range from quality of life improvements to some really cool new features that I think you guys are going to be hyped about. Welcome to the channel. Here, we not only cover Meta AI but also dive deep into predictions and analysis for other stocks. So, if you want to stay updated with the latest stock market insights and tech advancements, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If there's a specific stock or tech feature you'd like us to analyze, feel free to drop it in the comments below. Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, first up, we've got to talk about the new wake word. I mean, this is something a lot of people have been asking for, and Meta finally delivered. No more fumbling around with buttons or trying to get your headset to hear you. Now you can just casually say, hey Meta, and boom, you're connected. It's super responsive too. I've been testing it out for the past few days and it's picked up my voice every single time, even when I'm in a different room or there's a bit of background noise. And the best part is, it just feels more natural, more intuitive, like you're actually interacting with an assistant, not just barking commands at a device, but it goes beyond just waking up the assistant. You can use the Hey Meta Wake word to launch apps, control your settings, even get real world help using Meta AI's vision mode. Imagine this, you're trying to figure out what kind of cable you need for your TV, you just say, hey Meta, what kind of cable is this? And it'll use the headset's cameras to identify it for you. Pretty cool, right? And speaking of cool, this new wake word isn't just a software update, it's actually powered by Meta's latest advancements in AI. They've been working on making their voice recognition more accurate and natural sounding, and you can really tell the difference. It's not perfect, of course, but it's a huge step forward. The way I see it, this wake word is just the beginning. It's a glimpse into the future of how we're going to be interacting with our devices. No more typing, no more menus, just natural voice-controlled experiences. And honestly, I'm here for it. Next up, let's talk multitasking because Meta just supercharged the Quest capabilities. We're talking up to six windows open simultaneously. Six. That means you can be gaming while also having a chat window open, a browser window for looking up walkthroughs, maybe even a screen mirroring your computer all at the same time. This is a game changer for productivity, especially for those who like to have multiple things going on at once. Imagine working on a project with your team, referencing notes in one window, having a video call in another, and actually interacting with a 3D model in the main view. This is next level multitasking people. And it's not just about the number of windows, but how smoothly they all run. I was honestly expecting some lag or performance issues with so much going on, but honestly it's been butter smooth. The transitions are seamless, and I haven't experienced any dropped frames or slowdowns, but Meta didn't stop there. They've also enhanced the multitasking experience with spatial audio. Now, when you have multiple windows open, the audio from each window is spatially positioned, meaning it sounds like it's coming from the direction of the window itself. It's a subtle detail, but it makes a huge difference in terms of immersion and being able to focus on specific tasks. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Isn't six windows a bit overkill? And honestly, for some people it might be. But for power users, for creators, for anyone who wants to get the most out of their quest, this is a game changer. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities, and I can't wait to see what people do with it. But the real question is, how well does this work in practice? Well, I've been putting it to the test, and I've got to say, I'm impressed. I've been able to seamlessly switch between gaming, browsing the web, watching videos, and even doing some work, all without any noticeable lag or performance issues. And the spatial audio? Seriously impressive. It really does feel like you're surrounded by your different apps and windows, each with its own distinct audio space. It's a level of immersion that I haven't experienced before in VR, and it really adds to the feeling of being present in a virtual environment. Let's be real for a second, how many of us have apps or games in our VR libraries that we just don't use anymore? They just sit there taking up space, cluttering up our view. Well, Meta finally heard our pleas and introduced a feature so simple, yet so essential, the ability to remove from library. This might seem like a small thing, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. No more scrolling through pages of unwanted demos or games you tried once and never touched again. You can finally curate your VR library, keeping only the experiences you truly love and use. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, why didn't they have this before? And honestly, that's a great question. It seems like such a basic feature, something that should have been there from the beginning. But hey, better late than never, right? 
And the best part is, it's super easy to use. Just navigate to the app or game you want to remove, select it, and you'll see the remove from library option. A couple of taps, and boom, it's gone. Just like that, your VR library is clean, organized, and filled only with the experiences you actually want. But it's not just about aesthetics. A clean and organized library also means a smoother and more enjoyable VR experience overall. No more wasted time scrolling through irrelevant content. No more accidentally launching the wrong app. It's all about efficiency and making your VR life as seamless as possible. All right, this next feature is for all the creatives out there. Meta just unleashed stylus support for Quest, opening up a whole new world of possibilities for artists, designers, and anyone who loves to doodle in VR. We're talking about using a real stylus like the upcoming Logitech MX Ink to interact with compatible apps. Imagine painting in VR with the precision and control of a traditional pen and paper but with the added depth and immersion that only VR can provide. This is a game changer for apps like Painting VR, Gravity Sketch, and Tilt Brush. It allows for finer details, more nuanced strokes, and a level of creative expression that just wasn't possible with hand tracking alone. And the best part is, the stylus integration is incredibly responsive. I've been testing it out with some early builds of compatible apps, and I'm blown away by how natural it feels. There's virtually no latency, and the pressure sensitivity is on point. It's like you're actually drawing or painting in the virtual world. But it's not just about the artistic applications. Stylus support also opens up new possibilities for productivity and accessibility. Imagine taking handwritten notes in VR, annotating documents, or even signing digital contracts with a level of precision and control that rivals real life. This is a huge step forward for VR as a platform, and I can't wait to see how developers take advantage of this new feature. Now let's talk about some of the smaller updates that Meta squeezed into this release. They might not be as flashy as the new wake word or stylus support, but they make a big difference in terms of the overall user experience. First up, Bluetooth pairing. If you've ever struggled to connect your Bluetooth headphones to your Quest, you'll appreciate this one. Meta's streamlined the pairing process, making it faster and more reliable. No more digging through menus or dealing with connection drops, just pair your headphones and you're good to go. Next, we've got some improvements to the content adaptive backlight. This feature, which adjusts the screen brightness based on the content you're viewing, has been around for a while, but Meta's made it even better. It's now more responsive and does a better job of conserving battery life, which is always a good thing. And finally, we've got some updates to the boundary settings for Horizon Home. For those who aren't familiar, Horizon Home is your personal space in VR, where you can customize your environment, hang out with friends, and launch apps and games. Meta's made some tweaks to the boundary settings, making it easier to define your play area and avoid any unwanted real-world collisions. These might seem like small things, but they all add up to a more polished and enjoyable VR experience. It's clear that Meta is paying attention to user feedback and is committed to making the Quest the best VR headset it can be. So there you have it guys. The top 5 new features in the latest MetaQuest update. From the game-changing multitasking capabilities to the subtle but impactful quality-of-life improvements, Meta's clearly dedicated to pushing the boundaries of what's possible in VR. With these updates, MetaQuest headsets just keep getting better. Let us know in the comments which feature you're most excited about, or if there's something else you'd like to see improved. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future VR deep dives. Until next time.